Now, I don't get swag boxes often. I don't know if people think that I don't appreciate them. Did they just not understand the bro? Am I the weird YouTube knife reviewer? Uh, <laughs> it's hard to say with a straight face. <laughs> We're all weird. No one likes any of us. But even if I am awkward in most social interactions, Flytanium thought it was a good idea to ask me if I wanted new scales for the Blurple Paramilitary 2 I have. I've had that one for years, and I said, mm, you know what, why not? Or more appropriately, why not? The spittle dripped down my lips, and I caressed my pewter dragon necklace, because, yes, I read aloud all my messages as I type them on my phone, just like everyone else does. It's an Android. But I decided on the natural G10 offering from them because I missed out on all the retailer exclusive drops over the years. So then, a huge box arrived, and what I did not expect was all the stickers. Inside the box, there was a nice soft shirt, which is my new favorite that I will wear every day without washing under my floor-length black trench coat, the aroma adding to the cornucopia of smells at the knife shows I attend, some lanyard beads, more stickers, and a big surprise, two sets of scales and stickers. One set that was not on the market yet, it is now because I've taken a little bit too long to get this video out. I didn't even know about those. Which is not really a surprise because I'm always out of the knife news loop. I mean, not quite. Please don't ask me if I've seen the news zero tolerance. I've, I've seen it, okay? You know, sometimes there are reasons that I don't talk about things. I just don't care. But here we are. The smooth, sculpted, milled natural G10 and some very nice titanium scales. Now with my following opinion, I won't be taking any notes or arguing with anyone on this. But the Paramilitary 2 is a reference pocket knife. And what I regard as the perfect modern folding knife that is a good size. Checking off the boxes, it is uh, relatively lightweight. It has a sick as hell name that tactical cosplayists respond well to. Very important. It is well balanced in the hand. Very fun to deploy. Flick and fidget with. Available in many steels if you want to chase exclusives and sprints. And lastly, it has a healthy aftermarket support. You can find all kinds of parts for this knife. It may not be my favorite, you know, knife, you know, in an absolute sense, but other pocket knives at bigger price points just can't improve on how much it gets right. This is the knife. Someone's like, well, I have a few hundred bucks to spend. Paramilitary 2. Well, it's uh, too big. Para 3? Eh, eh, I don't know. It's harder to recommend the Para 3 than it is the Paramilitary 2. Now, there's nothing wrong with the grip of the Paramilitary 2. It's great, smooth, feels sure in the hand. But I have been staring at that Blurple G10 for, you know, years, and I thought, what the hell? Think of the content, though. I've made five Instagram posts already about it. Not even done yet. So that means it'll give me like three videos. You got the unboxing, the review, the thoughts after five months of occasional carry. It's a big deal. People really want to know. Now these scales, Flytanium's scales, are direct swap-ins for the originals that use the original hardware. They achieve that sculpted look by being a hair thicker, like maybe by a tenth of an inch, but with deeper milling on the grip and top side. Weight gain for the G10 over the OEM's G10 scales is minimal as well. That added material gives the middle of the handle where your palm goes some extra swell. It doesn't feel much different in the pocket, but ever so slightly, in my opinion, gives it a nicer feel in your hand. Natural G10 Para Military 2 knives are usually limited. Weird emphasis there. However, these are easy to get at 45 bucks. You can find them on Blade HQ or Flytanium's website. They have some Micarta for 49 and uh, these brand new titaniums are about 85 I think the standard titaniums are $80, so not that much different. A little more material taken away. Anyway, we take the knife apart for the first time. It's not fun, but you can do it, okay? I have, I have faith in you. You need two sets of tor- <laughs> You need two sets of tor torques wrenches. You'll need two sets of torque wrenches because of the pivot and the dual screw tubes. You got a screw on either side, and I use the bits seen here, and I will link them below. They are properly hardened and don't fuck up soft Spyderco screws as easily as the cheap bit kits. You know, you see soft bits often deform easier when you use them, so those edges get rounded, and a bit with rounded edges will not grip the inside of the screw tightly, and then in turn will strip out the screws. It's a vicious cycle. You pay more for Weehas because of the higher quality bits. Now, as far as knives go, remember either the screws on your $150 knife can break when you remove them because they're over-hardened, or they can strip out because they're too soft. There is no middle ground, okay? So don't even ask them. Do you want to go to jail, or do you want to go home? With all that said, you need to understand I've had this knife for years now. I've used it a lot, so the Loctite has loosened up. Some people report having to boil their knives, or worse, to get the pivot lockout to loosen. 
Now, I didn't have to kill anyone. I went with positive thinking and had an easy time. Pocket clip goes first. Remember, both versions of the Flytanium here are tip up, played backward in the right pocket, which is the ideal position for most right-handed persons. However, the left-handed knife persons are gonna go pound sand. Now, I removed the standoff at the back and the stop pins next. It made it easier to use both screw Torx drivers. However, you'll remove one and the other will free spin if you did it like I'm doing here. This was my first time taking apart the knife, and I thought of my hubris, just one Torx driver would do, but it's much easier with two. I've learned in subsequent teardowns that two is much easier. It should have been logical from the beginning, of course. Standoff here proved I was a fool when I decided to use one, though. So what I did was I put one screw back in, then loosened the other side, then kind of, you know, did them, I alternated sides, and then I was able to remove it. In total, I removed the scales three times. Each time was easier. No Loctite on the standoff and stop pin as far as I could tell. Now the pivot. Remember, use two bits, one for either side. The pivot will generally have Loctite, but the older your knife is, the Loctite may have slightly disintegrated over the years, so you'll have an easier time like myself. I use one driver here, but I had to put one of the screws back in to hold the pivot sleeve or collar or whatever the hell it's called and loosen the other side. Now with the pivot, with the blade removed, now came the worst part, the goddamn lanyard tube. The ends are slightly flanged and it's a tight press fit. Eventually you can just work them loose one side at a time. One of the sides eventually popped off. But the trick is you don't want to bend it too hard because you do have a metal liner and you have a metal tube, so you don't want either one of those deforming one another. So you don't want to bend it uh, too far outwards. One side popped off for me and then the other side was more difficult. I had to use a chopstick to you know, turn it in small circles, but also apply downward pressure on the scale while applying upward pressure on the tube. The idea here is you use something soft like a chopstick, soft like wood, so it doesn't deform the metal. Now this is only difficult the very first time you do it. The flytaniums both went on and came apart without issue. The liners here are press fit and fit inside the scales. You do have to pop them. There's a tiny tab you can lift to pop them out after you've removed the tube so then they come right out. Now inside the flytanium scales, if you look closer, there's milling. They are lightweight. Now here are the various weights of the OG scales and both the flytaniums, and then the hardware by itself. So you can take that hardware knowledge there, you know, the blade, the, the clip, the screws, the standoffs, the spacers, all that stuff, and then combine it with aftermarket scales you're looking for, and you can figure out the weight. So when putting the knife back together, note that the pivot sleeve has one side that has a flat area. So it's uh, asymmetrical, one side's completely rounded, one side's flat. I would recommend when putting the knife together to start with the liner, the scale, the washer, and the pivot on that side because that way it doesn't turn in there. If you do it the other side, it's round and then you'll never have that flat part lined up to the flat part in the liner. The liner on that side and the pivot sleeve go together one way. Then put the screw into that side to hold it in place, not all the way tight. And then I pick up the other scale and liner, put in the standoff or the stop pin that holds those together so they kind of don't fall apart. And then you can kind of sandwich them together and, and kind of slowly work your thumbs and fingers to make sure that they all go together, you know, flush. I noticed the stop pin was the hardest to get to, to go flush. So you need to make sure you start with that and then maybe the standoff. Then you tighten the screws all around. You don't tighten them at first as you're getting it all together, but once uh, everything's sandwiched together and you're holding the knife together tightly in your hand, you, then you can just take the Torx drivers and then start tightening the, the screws all around. I don't know if you want to add Loctite again. I didn't. If the pivot ever gets loose with use, I prefer to just tighten the pivot down. I guess Loctite is for the people who buy their $150 knives and can't make minor mechanical adjustments. I'm not saying you have to take apart your knives, but you just have to know how they work and then uh, do adjustments on the fly and not overthink. The, the dudes that take apart their knives for like a 5 to 10% improvement in deployment are wasting their time. Now, if you're swapping out your scales or you have to clean something out, then okay, but disassembly porn is not this channel's uh, forte. A little booklet in the case with basic maintenance and a picture would go a long way with these knives instead of the Loctite. That's just my opinion. So what about the scales on the knife? Now the thing is with the Paramilitary 2 is that it's well balanced and works well with the scale that fits the spirit of the original. Something lightweight and, uh, you know, G10, FRN, Micarta. The natural G10 improves on the feel in the hand for me and keeps it similar to the original uh, in look, you know? The scale itself is rounded, chamfered, probably not tumbled. Tumble G10. Don't tell me it's impossible or a bad idea, okay? It's not like you just made that up. 
Not a harsh edge anywhere though. There's a tiny, not even really there, bit of pokiness in the compression lock, which is present on my blurple scales too. But you never notice it because of the way your finger hits the compression lock when it's uh, you know working it. I only noticed it when the scales were off. Now you can't move the clip around like on the OG scales to whatever position. However, I carry tip up, blade backward in the right pocket like other right-handed human beings. The tip downers can see themselves out of the room. Now that I got these new scales, I want to change the clip. I do like the original clip. However, a flame titanium and some loud hardware, it's like the knife guy's fart pipe, an ill-fitting front spoiler flapping in the wind. I want my paramilitary two to look like that. Okay, what about the titanium? The titanium is great. All edges, rounded, chamfered, smoothed, whatever. It's smooth in the hand and has a real great look. Looking through Flytanium's past scale offerings, this is probably the nicest and most complex version of their metal scales. The interior is further milled to keep weight down. Inside, you know, there's something a little extra down under the, the where the liners go. Now I weighed the knife. Total, it's 4.85 ounces, which is about an ounce heavier than a standard paramilitary too. The balance point of the knife shifts a bit too, just a tiny amount, maybe a quarter of an inch tops handle heavy toward the back of the knife. I mean, people love adding backspacers, artisan lanyard sculptures, so it ain't too bad. I still prefer a lighter paramilitary too, though, so I'm sticking with the natural G10 scales. I also like a little more visual contrast of the color of the handles to the blade. Maybe a cool fade anodization would really make the titanium pop. The good news here is, though, I'll be giving away the titanium scales on my Instagram in a few days or a week or two. Got a, got a few things to do between now and then. So follow me over there to get a chance at them. That about does it. You can get Flytaniums a lot of places, like their website, which is where you should go first, or, you know, then Blade HQ. Check out the description below. Uh, Flytanium makes scales for bug outs. They make scales for, I think, the proper uh, other Spyderco models. So go there and check out and see if your scale is over there. Follow me over on Instagram for that giveaway. You can always buy a t-shirt. You can follow Flytanium there, too. Buy a sticker or mug for me. You know, that supports the channel and whatever this bullshit is I'm doing. Uh, here are my Patreon persons. Say hi to them. Uh, like, subscribe, comment on the video. Thanks for watching.